foodborne illness. So foodborne illness is another common aspect. In fact, one out of four Americans will get a foodborne illness every year. Okay. And so what we're looking at is it's common. Like we used to think people getting sick was only like when we traveled outside the country, right? And no, that's eating here. In fact, 40% of those infections are from us eating at a restaurant outside of our home in the United States. 60% is from uh, our aspect of um, eating at home in the United States. Now, these are the, the bacteria that are common, Salmonella, Listeria, E. coli, Campylobacter, Clostridium, Cryptosporidium, Shigella. You probably hear a lot of these things in the news a lot of times. And you'll see here where the foodborne illness is coming from. Interesting thing is that 95% of these things are coming from animal proteins, right? Eggs, cheese, meat, 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 pigs, fish, you know, all these things like that. Now, you can see there are some from the vegetables and some from fruits and juices. But what that's coming from with the misunderstanding that most people, um, and it's common, believe it or not, I ask my patients all this all the time, they will see on the news like every season, um, you'll see that, oh, the spinach has E. coli or the, uh, the, the onions have listeria or, you know, the tomatoes have uh, Campylobacter or salmonella. There's a recall of that. But vegetables and plants do not have these bacteria, okay? This is all coming from the inside of an animal gut due to a factory farm that's usually upstream from the farm, okay? So it's contamination. Spinach doesn't have any of these things. Tomatoes don't have these. Now, what's unfortunate is that the water supply from factory farming is being dumped into upstream to the downstream where there might be an organic farm, and then that, that gets contaminated. And then if someone doesn't wash it or cook it very well, then we're getting this cross-contamination. That's why now, unfortunately, which we have to do is with all our fruits and vegetables now, when you get it from the store, even if it's organic, you still have to wash it right? Because it's touched everything. It's fallen on the floor. Many people have touched it, you know, just putting it on the shelf at a grocery store, but you have to be careful. These are all, these are things that are causing foodborne illnesses that causes dysfunction to your microbiome. So interesting thing is that now we look at things like small intestinal bacterial growth, SIBO, a large predominant uh, history with those patients would be having a foodborne illness. So that means one fourth of the, of the people in the United States now have a higher risk of getting small intestinal bacterial growth just from going on a cruise and having, you know, or I just had a, a patient uh, two weeks ago and they were uh, in California, they had a big wedding. And unfortunately, you know, due to the pandemic, all these things, you know, food has not been turning over very well. They went to a nice place, but they had the, the, about 20, 25 people got food poisoning at the, uh, at the, at the uh, wedding. And it's just because food can sit out and can spoil. So you always want to make sure one of the nice things is that as you go to eating more plant-based, okay, not only for your health and for the environment, but you're actually lowering your risk of these kind of, of aspects because you're avoiding the contamination of animal protein products. So just one other thing to look at is like, gosh, if you go more plant-based and you eliminate these things out of your house, even then your risk of getting sick is, is, is lowered much uh, greatly. Now, GMOs and environmental toxins. Okay, so the top 10 genetically modified foods is a list in my book. Uh, now we even have genetically modified salmon that is, was introduced, uh, passed through Congress two years ago uh, into the food supply, which we have no long-term data on that. But these genetically modified foods and you know things that are using this, this glyphosate, as everybody knows, and now it's not just Monsanto, it's a generic now product that, that dozens and dozens of manufacturers can use. This also causes dysfunction. Now, there's other, other, other scientists and researchers on this panels uh, for this conference who will go into that in detail. So I'm not going to cover that much, but just understanding that these are just similar to triggering dysfunctions of the gut, causing leaky gut. It causes uh, macro micronutrient deficiencies, chelating out certain minerals. So just as much as it kills a weed or it kills an insect, it does on a micro level, the same dysfunction to the gut. So you, you definitely want to look at eating more organic when possible, avoiding GMO foods, and definitely avoiding uh, um, these kind of chemicals and sprays. I see people all the time just spraying this stuff in their yard, walking around with no shoes or socks, and just, you know, without even a mask or gloves, you shouldn't be using it. There's tons of natural things that we help our patients with of like just using like, you know, a high percentage of vinegar products that can actually kill. That's what we use in our office. We use completely um, safe, natural, like a high concentration of, uh, of uh, essential vinegar. And it kills, we have our groundskeepers and our, and, our, and our landscapers for our office and our home actually use it. And they're actually thankful because there's less um, uh, toxicity to them as well. And, you know, this is going to be controversial because I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of questions at the end of the day, but colonics and coffee enemas, you know, this is kind of a, a Western concept that was like uh, developed. And now, you know, you see a lot of alternative um, 
uh, alternative uh, uh, clinics and kind of holistic practices or a hydrotherapist and all looking at, you know, giving coffee enemas or just colonics itself. But one thing that they don't understand is that it actually creates dysfunction of the microbiome. It, it's not normal to be flushing, you know, 10 to 16 gallons of water through your colon. In fact, the water actually uh, becomes a drying agent. Um, no culture does this around the world naturally. You know, natural detoxification is actually having one to three well-formed bowel movements eating greater than 35 grams of fiber a day of a plant-based diet. The reason why this whole thing was invented because when people don't eat a healthy diet, they get constipated and this was kind of the quick fix, but we're not supposed to be going up and like being a car, like and getting a jiffy lube and saying, well, I just need to go get my oil change. We're not like that. We weren't designed for that. And one thing that we've been able to do in the last 10 years is actually measure people's microbiome before and after, and we can show a dysfunction because when we're flushing them out, believe it or not, you cannot replenish. So a lot of people are like, oh, I go to my colon hydrotherapist or I go to this clinic and I was doing a coffee enema, I have cancer, et cetera, et cetera. And they're like, oh yeah. And then they gave me this little probiotic. I'm like, that's not going to help you. You've just lost, you know, dozens and dozens and tons and tons of hundreds of billions of species that you only get, you know, again, like maybe 20, 30, 40, 50 species maximum, if you're lucky even to get to your GI tract. Um, so we, you know, from an integrative perspective, we look at always uh, reducing and uh, removing these kind of things. Now, there is no data, by the way, being evidence-based. A lot of people will say, well, I feel better. I have more energy. Well, yeah, because you're constipated. Everybody will. This is more treating the symptoms rather than improving the underlying cause. Because again, we weren't, we weren't designed to actually do uh, evacuation through a machine or, or stimulation. Um, so this is something that, again, is kind of like a trend. That everybody, people have to you know, try to get colonics. But the interesting thing is the more colonics someone does by the drying action of water in the colon, then they actually get more constipated and then they have to come back. And so, in fact, we see all the time, a lot of times, these places will actually give a discount. They'll say, hey, get, you know, get your first two and then, and then for free. Because over a period of time, like you get stuck on these things and then people become colonic junkies. I've had a few patients, in fact, who end up having colon cancer and they're eating a completely, you know, anti-inflammatory plant-based diet. But this is just the chronic irrigation to the colon itself. It becomes a pro-inflammatory idea. Even though they say, well, I see I'm flushing all these toxins out. You're also flushing also good probiotics out. You're also flushing other aspects of the immune system that can't be replenished from some simple pills.